All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. Real quick, my name is uh, Raphael Mudge, and first and foremost, I'm here to do something very important. Um, so I'd like your attention as I do this. Um, I'm here to give out stickers. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, you know, just kind of like kindergarten style, start these out and just go ahead and pass one, take one, take two, but I hope everyone gets one. If you don't, come see me. I've got a really big box. So... Yes, I do, Jerry. All right, so let's go ahead and kick this off. I'd like to ask, I just want to get a feel for the room here real quick. How many of you played in um, collegiate cyber defense competition as a student? Oh, wow, actually, that's more than I expected, but I'm really happy to see that. How many of you were playing in the Northeast or Mid-Atlantic regions? Okay, I don't know all of you personally, but I think I may know your computers, so... What I'm here to do is, um, actually, this is going to be a really fun talk, one I've been wanting to give for several years. I'm actually going to be talking about how uh, the red teams at the Northeast uh, Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition and partially Mid-Atlantic one, uh, some of the tricks we employ. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So first off, for those of you who don't know what it is, I'm going to introduce what the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition is. And then I'm going to go into like a long digression of various stories where I give kind of shout outs to people you know, which is kind of a why I'm giving this talk. And then we're going to go into kind of a uh, evolution of the red team tactics I've seen over the years. So I'm going to kind of start out with what our process looks like as a red team and just cover like how we think about things, what we do, what's different, because it's really pretty crazy. We're taking today's modern tools and going against boxes, you know, set up from like 2002, 2003, so it's a bloodbath. Um, but we're going to talk about how the students do a pretty good job kicking our butts, getting us out, and how we change tactics to work around that, and the problems that created, and how we solve them. So real quick, here's what I hope uh, some of you get out of this. If you're a um, CCDC participant or a mentor for a team, I hope uh, you learn a little bit about how the red team thinks, how we operate. And you know, I hope you take some of the things uh, I give you back and use them to practice. I'm also releasing code at the end of this, all the scripts that we use in the beginning, so that's coming out. Uh, if you're a red team member, I hope you, you, know, you pick up a few things. You know, I, I'm actually the one who's been learning from all the people I've worked with. So if I've red teamed with you before, Georgia. <laughs> Hi. So if I've red teamed with you, I'm probably the one who like, you know, learned from you, but hey, there's some good stuff here. And for everybody else, there's a pretty cool story embedded here too. Because um, how many of you uh, heard or used uh, Armitage Metasploit? Okay, wow, that's pretty good. So Armitage came about because of this. So there's that kind of story in the background. It's a lot of fun. So first off, um, CCDC, for those who don't know, it's a uh, blue competition for college students, primarily undergraduates. Uh, students kind of come from, they come to uh, like a regional competition, and they all end up with the same computer network. Um, we're expected to manage about 7 to 10 servers, 50 users. Uh, they're supposed to have web, mail, all kinds of different things. And they're scored on their ability to keep these services going and their responses to injected events. So for example, they're told, hey, you need to write a password policy. And you've got an hour to do it because one hour of competition time simulates a week of real life time in the event. And most importantly, they're scored on their ability to stop the red team. So that's uh, CCDC in a nutshell. Um, I recommend you go to nationalccdc.org if you want to learn more about it. Let's go into um, who I am, why I'm giving this talk. Um, first off, I've really learned a lot at CCDC. I've been with the Northeast region since 2008, and I've been there every year. And it's particularly special to me because my last weekend, or my last time active duty Air Force in uniform was at Northeast CCDC 2008. They sent me in. I come back Monday, and I turn in my ID and say goodbye to the Air Force. So it was... Uh, Every time, it's an anniversary for me when I go to this event. Um, but I started out, so I'm a developer. You know, I write code. I'm not really much of a, a hacker. You know, back then, I hadn't refreshed my skill set. And so, you know, I was really learning a lot and being forced to kind of uh, try to find a way to be useful. So the event really helped me grow, I guess, as a, uh, as a hacker and penetration tester or what have you. Um, I've also worked uh, with the Mid-Atlantic uh, folks, 2011. I've done a lot of ex other exercises, too. but 
I'm going to keep this talk about CCDC. So uh, for the students participating, uh, just something about them, one of the reasons I'm giving this talk is that those who come out for the first time, they get demolished because they just don't know what to expect. And then the teams who keep coming back, they like mastered our tricks from the previous years. They do a pretty good job of it. And I just wanted to kind of get this information out there to help even that playing field. Because my goal is, the more information that's out there for people to prepare with, the more they're going to prepare, I hope, and hopefully, you know, better security professionals we're going to have. I'm also giving this talk to uh, answer a few common questions I get. Keep in mind, these students start out like with like Windows XP boxes. In, back in 2008, they had like Windows 2000. And they always ask me at the end, like, what, what O days did you guys use? Like, um, <laughs> you're using Windows 2000. I don't think so. Um, I'm also kind of, I hear the accusation, like, you guys had a head start. That's not fair. And that's actually never been true. So I want to get that out of the way. Um, we've sometimes started with like a two hour delay. Um, a half hour delay, sometimes we've been allowed to scan, and sometimes we've been allowed to start at the same time as the students, but never before. So had to get that out there. And a big question I'm always asked is, how did you get in? Put that out there now, default credentials. So get good at changing your passwords. Um, another reason, like I said, there's a story behind this. Uh, where you see those stars, those are things that are going to be the subject of this talk a little bit. Um, but at CCDC every year, a lot of creative people come in, and we, we always bring something uh, extra. Uh, myself, um, put together this little social engineering hack in 2008, doing a net send to all the boxes on the, uh, in the competition and telling people, hey, you need to download the Scorebot helper or else you can't get points. Worked on every team. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's dirty red team tricks. Wrote the system it's called Smokescreen 2009, trying to emulate the Scorebot traffic uh, from our attack space. And I think that was kind of a failure. It was a good experiment, but experiments do fail. So that's all right. I felt kind of bad after a year. I'm like, I didn't do anything. I tried. Um, but uh, eventually came up with this idea like, hey, well, what if we um, try to own everything right out automatically from the beginning and go from there? And we're going to talk about that. And I'm also going to talk a bit about Armitage and how we used it in this context, too. And of course, I'm talking about my projects here, right? But I'm not the only person doing this. Um, other people I've worked with, or had the real privilege of working with, keep bringing in other tricks, too. And uh, one example is uh, my friend Jerry is up front here. He wrote this rootkit called G-Spot. And there's this real truth to it. So for you students out there, I just got to tell you, with the G-Spot, you're never going to find it. <laughs> um, our friend Jay Boss, man, this guy is amazing. He's a system administrator, which is always like my favorite people. They've got the largest breadth of skills. He's like, yeah, I do a lot of work, you know, with my Cisco infrastructure. And he's like, hey, I think I can replace the default uh, shell in uh, iOS, you know, with like some tickle scripts they wrote. So he wrote this like iOS backdoor. He uh, actually uh, released that at Black Hat a couple years ago. But he brought that for CCDC. He made it to throw at these undergraduates who are like, you know, just figuring this out for the first time. So we're kind of mean in terms of like what we're bringing. <laughs> and um, my friend TJ, he made this really cool thing for uh, hacking all the Windows boxes automatically. And I'll show you guys that too. And also, I guess one of my favorite things from Mid-Atlantic is there's like this cluster of guys. I didn't really talk to them too much. But they rented out like, I don't know, like a 1,000 nodes on Amazon's EC2. And they're using that for password cracking. So we get a little crazy. I mean, because we're passionate about this. This is what we love doing because we're trying to give something back, and test out our ideas against a bunch of people who are trying to defeat them. So with that, now that you know the multitude of reasons why I'm kind of here to give this talk, I'd like to start out and go into our red teaming process. And this reflects, I think, 2008, 2009 pretty well, but it changed eventually. Uh, first off, reconnaissance. Students are coming into a fake, um, an artificial environment, right? I can't do a lot of pretexting. Unless I like, call the students with like a voice changer and say, I'm from the red team. I'm going to need your passwords. You know, I'm looking at you. <laughs> but you can't do that. So our form of reconnaissance is you know, Google. It still works. But we're looking for the team packets. So I'm typing here Northeast CCDC team packet. And you can see the 2010 one there and the 2011 one. 
And if you look in that team packet, you start to see some nice stuff. You know, uh, hmm, okay, they're using CentOS, Debian, Windows 2003. That's not vulnerable to anything. Ubuntu. Okay, cool. I know what IP addresses they're using and uh, what they're running. That's cool. That helps me with my reconnaissance. Um, but there's other information in these packets, too, that might be of real value to the red team. Free sticker to anybody who can guess. You know, like the default passwords. So that's our reconnaissance. I'm um, enumeration because the students know we're coming and we're trying to just get what we need to know as quickly as possible. We're just like nmap-p5, you know, let's just get it out there. Um, we have traditionally done Nessus scans. I really don't know why because they're running like such old operating systems, but you know, we do them anyways. I guess it just makes us feel like we're doing what we should do. Um, but like access is an interesting question because as I said at CCDC, um, to simulate uh, kind of like a hostile environment with like new attacks, they're using older operating systems, right? Ones that, you know, there have been exploits for years. So as the red team, we're kind of given this gift, if you will, certainly builds the confidence, where we could take today's tools and take them back to like 2003 <laughs> and go against these student networks. So it's, to say access, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, in the case when there was Windows 2000, it's RPC DCOM, it's MS0867, it's, you know, just like the really standard demo stuff, but it works in this environment. And of course, post exploitation is a lot of fun too. And what do we do for post? Well, we're not really trying to steal any data, though we do like to get the uh, uh, SQL databases and dump their stuff, dump their hashes. But sometimes we like to have a little bit of fun too. So I'm going to show you a little video. Uh, this is from, I want to say, Northeast CCDC. Let me go ahead and load that up. And what it is, is there's a student here trying to install Wireshark, okay? And I'm watching his screen, taking screenshots with Armitage every 10 seconds, and I keep going in and killing it on him. <laughs> 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 and eventually, he gets a little frustrated. He's like, hi, Dave. You guys stink. Go away. He kind of figures it out after, <laughs> after we've gone back and forth a little bit. So like I said, Dirty red team tricks. We're, there's no playing fair here. The students are at an absolute disadvantage, and I really admire them for how good they really do do at the end. Um, so yeah, actually, despite that, you know, 2008, 2009, here's kind of the tempo, okay? And because I've been on the team every year, I'm kind of like, you know, recounting this to everybody who joins us each year. I'm like, look, Friday, we get into everything, left and right. Because students are getting the boxes at the same time as us. They haven't set up an IDS yet. They haven't turned on the firewalls probably haven't even changed the passwords yet. So Friday's pretty bloody, okay? I mean, we get into everything and we're living everywhere. But by the end of uh, the first day on Friday, because it's a weekend competition, the students usually, in their past experience, a lot of them had, had us kind of kicked out. And then on Saturday, we'd have to go after the web applications and some of the uh, harder aspects of uh, the uh, network. And you know, it was much harder to get anything, okay? So that kind of adrenaline high of, oh, I got in, I got in, I got in, it's a big crash on Saturday. And Sunday, we usually have some stuff, and then we just start, like, breaking it as best as possible. Um, and I say that, and I'm talking about um, the servers and workstations here because our infrastructure team on the northeast side has been really, really, they're insane. You know, like, JBoss and Laura and Jonathan, they're just amazing to watch. So they're usually in the whole weekend. But... What I want you to keep in mind here is this problem, okay? Because it's going to feed the next part of the presentation. We can get in on Friday, but we eventually just get kicked out pretty quickly because we didn't do anything with all the access we developed, right? So, the next part of the presentation, the next evolution, is the war of persistence. Um, inspired by my, uh, a friend of mine, Ryan, so he was a security researcher also on the red team, much like me, but neither of us at the time had any pen testing experience. We're like, okay, what do you want us to code? Hmm. Like, we were trying to find a way to be useful. This is 2009, and Ryan had a really good idea. He just started, like, trying to log into every single box with default credentials on Saturday. And he was successful even then, getting into some stuff. I'm like, man. So that inspired me in 2010 to write a script. So that's what I like to do. I write scripts. And I was like, well, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do an nmap, you know, look for only port 22, okay? I'm going to do a really light brute force of any credentials that I know have been used or may be used, 
And I'm going to figure out what the root password, the default root password is on these different uh, Unix boxes. And I'm going to just dig in as deep as possible. And all the better, because I'm a programmer, I'm going to do this automatically. And we did this in 2010, right? And it was very successful because we ended up having um, access well into Saturday in a, in a bunch of places. Um, it, sometimes it was like threadbare, like one thing, but we still, we did much better. And that changed the game for us because that year was all about like just going after the Unix stuff. So I'm going to show you what we did like to kind of persist. Um, first thing we did is once we got that root password, and all this like, like this, it takes a couple seconds. First thing is on every box we got into across every team, it's like, well, we automatically inserted our SSH keys into the uh, root directory, right? Or into the root uh, authorized SSH keys. Cool. Um, another thing we like to do is um, we like to take uh, different uh, shells that don't drop set UID and um, copy them to random places and, you know, make them set UID, use touch to change the timestamp, and then um, use something called shatter plus I. Does anybody know what that does? Let's see a few of you. I'll give you a demo. This is really cool. We use Shatter plus I to do something really fun for the blue team. Let me show you. Ignore that. That's for a demo later. All right. Let me do it. Okay. Here we are. Can you guys see that okay? I like big fonts. Okay, cool. Okay. So Shatter plus I works like this. I'm root right now, right? Pretty obvious? Yeah. Okay, so let's say I make a file. I don't know. I'm just going to make a random file. And only one guy laughs. You wonder who that is? And what I'm going to do is I could do whatever I want to that file like this. You know, cat hello.txt. Whatever. And what I'm going to do is use shatter to change. Uh, well, here, let me show you something. LSALH, hello.txt. Read, write, read, read, whatever. Let me use shatter. This is going to change an attribute on the file. Okay, this applies to everybody. And if I do an LS ALH on that file, you see nothing's different, right? Okay. Well, let me, because I'm root and I can do whatever I want. Shatter is, it's like an extended set of permissions, but they're really attributes. So I is an immutable flag. It makes it so you can't change the file until the attribute is removed. And Laura is the one who taught this to me. Um, again, why it's good to go these. But if I do LS ATTR, I can see that the immutable uh, flag is set on this file. And that's the only way you can tell it's there. So if you don't know about it, and you're like, man, I need to add a user, and I keep getting permission denied, why, oh why, I'm root, why can't I add a user? Well, it's probably because the red team shatter plus I had Etsy shadow and Etsy password. <laughs> so of course, we do our standard stuff, adding new users. I love doing that. You know, nobody, I like nobody eight. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, we also like to backdoor new users. Love it. Uh, one of the things I like to do is uh, generate uh, an interpreter uh, reverse TCP shell, binary, uh, out of Metasploit. Or not interpreter, excuse me. Uh, just a plain reverse shell. And I get this binary. And we upload it to a box, usually somewhere inconspicuous, like, you know, like user bin UFW or something like that. And we like to add it to, like, etsyscale.profile. And what that does is every time a new user is created, they're going to get these files from the scale directory, and they're going to have in their profile um, something that runs a backdoor that connects to me automatically every time they log in for every new user. So, <laughs> and of course, we use our favorite trick, you know, shatter plus I to uh, lock those files down so they can't um, undo that on us. And so that's um, another example of what we like to do. Um, you can't see this code that well. It's okay. I'm releasing all of it. It's fine. Um, but one of our favorite things to do is like do a little callback. So we like to uh, create a script. Or we have a script that looks for, does the box have links? No. Wget? No. Curl? Yes. It connects back to our server. You know, just downloads a file. Schmod plus exit. Run it and delete it. And what we do is we like to stick this in crontab, giving it a very innocuous sounding name. And of course, shatter plus i and touch dash d to change those timestamps again. Those are our friend. Because if you see something, you're like in a competition, it's like March 3rd, 2011, you're like, okay, yeah, red team probably. But you know, 12 July, 2008, who's going to suspect that, right? So quick story, um, 2010, this is kind of foreshadowing what's coming next. Um, late Saturday, the only access we really had left was that cron tab back door, okay? But we still had some of the harder target teams actually still calling back with that. 
and we, mod we set our shell script to actually run netcat to connect back to us. So we had, it, every time it came in, every hour, it would do a netcat to six of us, okay? So we'd each have our netcat listeners waiting, unless we screwed up with it, and then we'd have to wait another hour for that person. But it was really fun because, you know, every hour it would be waiting, and we had it just time. And it was like, all right, we got shells. And we would, like, kind of dance and then go on the box, and about two minutes later, the students would see us. I think uh, you guys, Northeastern, were one of those, and you just boot us out. But, I mean, I really learned the value at that time of uh, how much fun it is when a team is working together on one box. And before I revisit this kind of teaming aspect, I'd like to um, talk about the Windows side of things. Uh, my friend TJ, who's one of my favorite people to red team with, uh, he had a pretty cool idea. He came back in 2011. He's like, hey, just like uh, this Unix thing I did in 2010, he's like, I'm going to do an nmap, look for everything with port 445 open, and I'm going to generate a Metasploit RC file to uh, run uh, the popular MS0867 NetAPI exploit against every single Windows box automagically. And so, of course, you know, we do our little nmap, and this goes pretty quick because we're just looking for one port. Um, we find all the boxes that are open or that are up. And we generate our Metasploit script. Looks something like this. We tell, okay, we're going to run persistence and tell it where to go. And we're just going to uh, set G payload, set G this auto run script. So it automatically runs when a box comes back. And then we uh, just set our host IP, run this exploit in the background. That's what exploit J is. Set our host IP, run this exploit in the background, over and over again. So what you end up with is something pretty fast at just kind of getting every single uh, Windows box that's available to us and vulnerable to this. And I'd like to show you another video, because these are a lot of fun. OK, this is from Mid-Atlantic CCDC. And it's not as glorious as Northeast CCDC, because we had a lot more access from it. But here are these two scripts, the Unix one and the Windows one in action. Oops. I apologize, that's a little hard to read, but it, it's at least scrolly and pretty, and we'll see lightning bolts in a minute. Um, you can see a lot of stuff scrolling, and you can already see here in Armitage, just user interface for Metasploit, um, some hosts coming up. You know, here we go, already been running this, by the way, for mid-Atlantic people. 1.23 p.m., you were allowed to start at 1. I say that because I got accused of us starting early. But anyways, you can see a bunch of Windows boxes starting to pop up. And here's some more coming in. So we've got something across every team. Persistence on them, too. And let's, um, the Unix stuff, I have to, it's already been owned. That's what you see right here. Um, but we're going to have those pop up in a moment, too. Just give me a minute. I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I fast forwarded this, so it'd go. OK, there's the Unix stuff. And now I'm going to connect to them with Armitage. Connect, I say. There we go. I'm doing SSH underscore login, nobody ate. I think the password I used was Tor. There we go. There's our Unix boxes. And you know, just within like kind of like a couple minutes, you know, we've got all this like initial access, right? And those Unix boxes, keep in mind, are backdoored six ways to Sunday already. So that's the uh, opening salvo here at the mid Atlantic CCDC of those same scripts. So let me go and um, go from there. Okay. So got a lot of access, right? Pretty cool. Persistent access. Awesome. Well, we now have an access problem, meaning too much access and no way to manage it. And hear me out on this. It's like, OK, we got in. You know, Somebody ran some scripts, or some people are really good, like Georgia using her MS09, getting into all the Vista SP1 boxes, props, um, are getting access all over the place. And it's like, great, they can persist, and they persist to themselves, right? And then maybe they can do like what I showed you or talked about earlier with the Netcat listeners, send accesses off to the post-exploitation people. But you know, making multiple connections out from the victim, that's kind of noisy, right? It's a pretty easy spot, especially when you're like looking. And of course, the other problem in this uh, situation is, yeah, you get that initial access, but everybody else still wants to get their own. So they're hacking in with the same exploits and sometimes making the box unstable or what have you. It's really noisy and chaotic. So this is a problem, right? So let's talk about teaming and what can be done for that. So from my experience at these uh, different uh, events, like Northeast CCDC, I was like, OK, cool. We have, like, we have a lot of fun, but we're kind of stepping on each other sometimes. And those of us who don't, have, who don't know Metasploit really well or don't have core impact, we can't just get into everything easily. So what is it 
we need so we can participate. And so I thought about this and said, well, real-time communication, I'd like to know what's happening and what has happened, what attacks worked, what didn't work. I'd like to know, I'd like to have some way to manage the data. Like, you know, if somebody does a scan, it'd be nice that everybody had the latest version of it, right? And um, most importantly, though, is session sharing. If we develop all this access, we get all this persistence, we do it magically like nothing, wouldn't it be nice if anybody on the team could use that access and do something? I think so. Everybody's kind of like looking at me like, hmm, that, that might be okay, but nah, I hate people. I don't want to work with them. <laughs> it's all good. So to solve that problem, I started out, and I, um, I developed Armitage for Metasploit. As most of you know, probably, you know, it's GUI for Metasploit. I, I think of it as a tabbed MSF console. I mean, really, I'm trying to avoid, like, creating a button for everything. You know, I'm trying to curate the experience, uh, geared especially towards these kind of events, uh, initially, anyways. And um, one of the things I wanted to implement, it, and I did, was uh, session sharing, uh, uh, some teaming stuff. And I'm going to do a demo of that here in a second. But just to give me an idea of how this works is Armitage is actually a client that connects to Metasploit. So think of Metasploit as a server, right? Um, problem is, is if two of us try to interact with the same session at the same time, it's not always kind of the, the uh, best result. So I created the second piece of software called a deconfliction server. And it runs on the same box as your shared Metasploit. And your Armitage client connects to Metasploit. And silently, it connects to the deconfliction server. And whenever Armitage tries to interact with Meterpreter, it routes uh, the command through the deconfliction server, which queues it up and executes each command in turn and routes it to the right client. And I'm going to show this to you what it looks like, but that's how I did session sharing. Oh, how convenient. Time for a teaming demonstration. OK. Here we are at my trusty backtrack box, OK? You can't see this that well. But I can probably do view zoom, zoom in. Oh, well, that worked. Ah, eh, whatever. I've started up Metasploit's RPC daemon, OK? This is the Metasploit server mode that lets clients communicate with it. I've also started up something, um, a mode of Armitage. And this would work on a headless server just fine. Amazon's EC2 works too. Um, but this uh, starts up Armitage's deconfliction server. And when I do this, it gives me all these details I can copy and paste and give to my team so they know how to connect. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run Armitage here for my nifty uh, Mac OS X doc. There we go. It's already got the details in there because I tested this. All right, I need a cool nickname. Oh, let's see here. Spatial Geek. All right, I am now connected with my Mac OS X box here to... Uh, to this uh, Metasploit server running on Backtrack, OK? Nothing special here. This is Armitage. And you can see we've already got a box that's already owned. If you see lightning bolts in Armitage, it means the box has been hacked, OK? And let's, I'm going to catch up on what's going on, going on for real-time communication. We go to this event log. And you can see, you can see some guy named Jay joined. And he ran MSO867 against this box, got a session, and I'm here too. And I can say, you know, like, something like sucks. Right? So let's go ahead and I'll get another client in here, too, to make it more of a red team. Go to Windows 7. And go in there. Got to click that. And these are just boxes with um, Java and yeah, Java installed. I just downloaded Armitage from the website for the client only. So already got the details. I'm going to go ahead and connect. I need a cool nickname. Jerry. All right. Here I am. I too am on Metasploit. And give it a minute to uh, refresh all the different stuff I want to know. There we go. You can see I've got two people kind of joining the game. And it's all good. But <laughs> hmm. All right. So you can already see kind of real time communication, right? We can see that. Um, you know, Jay did, uh, did this exploit earlier. Fine. So we got like some sense of uh, continuity. Let's go ahead and I want to show you what session sharing looks like. I've got this box. Let me right click it. And let me um, open up a command shell. OK? And just give that a second. Windows is always slower. 
I don't recommend using Armitage on Windows, by the way. I almost tolerate it, but it's not my favorite place to test it. Um, but I can type whatever commands I want. Keep in mind, I'm joining the red team later in the game, and eventually I'll come back. There we go. Um, let me go over here to the Mac client. Same box, only one session. I, too, can open up a command shell, and I can type whatever commands I want, you know, no problem. And because I'm remote, thanks to deconfliction server, if I want to take a, I don't know, like a webcam shot, see what the students are doing, you know, I can do that too, and it'll download it for me. I can take a screenshot, no problem. Let's see, explore, screenshot. Oh, that's not very exciting. Um, I can also, let's see here, go back to my Windows guy, and at the same time, this guy can, um, oh, I don't know, work with the processes or whatever. What I want you to see here is that there's a team of people, three people, and we're able to kind of just use this session like it's ours, okay? So pretty neat. And like, let's say you start developing access. Like, somebody's like, well, I'm going to do an ARP scan, see what networks are available um, to this host, see what hosts are live on it. So I go ahead and kick that off. Everybody else on the team, see the event log tab went bright, and they're like, hey, Jerry launched an ARP scan. Oh, hey, there's hosts starting to pop up. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And it's like, well, let me set up a pivot. So Jer or Spatial D is going to build off of uh, Jerry's work here. So let me go pivoting, set up. Let's go ahead and set that up. Add pivot. There we go. Pretty soon we're going to get pretty green lines, I hope. Refresh, please. Thank you. And OK, great. We've got a pivot set up. We can see what hosts are um, available. I'm going to go ahead and highlight these. I can't do an Nmap scan through a pivot. Um, but I can do run Metasploit's discovery modules through it. And so I'm going to just, bun Armitage bundles them up as a scan menu. So I'm going to click that. And now you can see that uh, Jerry launches ARP scans, or Spatial D set up a pivot, and now Spatial D launched all these modules. The back and forth I want you to see here is that we as at one team are working together, and as the situation changes and evolves, we can kind of see what's going on at the same time. Okay, so here I'm on the Win7 box, and because of a scan that Spatial D kicked off, um, I'm able to see all that scan data. That's data sharing, right? You know, it's kind of transparent. And it's like if I happen to know um, that earlier somebody uh, was good enough to um, dump the hashes, okay, so let me flip to another box over to the Mac. I can see the event log that Jerry dumped the hashes. Well, maybe I'm like, well, hey, let me see if that works. Let me try to PS exec and do a pass the hash to their domain controller and see what happens, right? What you can see, even though I'm just like crudely going back and forth, is that as a team, we're able to build off each other's work. And in the past, that was never possible in this way before. So that's kind of um, something that's really, really helped the way we do red teaming. And it wouldn't be fair if this didn't end up working. There we go, we got lightning bolts again. So that's uh, just uh, Armitage uh, teaming in, in action. And you're probably like, well, that's cool. How well did it work in real life? Well, at Northeast CCDC, I brought this in, okay? And I'm like, hey, guys, I made this for us. And they're like, oh, that's kind of cool. But because they're my friends and they've tolerated me for several years, they're like, okay, we'll try it out. So we ran my Unix scripts and TJ's scripts uh, to own all the Windows boxes. And we set up a shared Metasploit server, right? And um, we run this. And we ended up with 70 sessions back, right? Can you guess what happened next? Crash. I was, oh, I got to talk into the mic. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> um, we, we got it back up, and we, we, rec we recovered some, most of our accesses. No problem. That's fine. Um, but yeah, it was kind of disappointing. I realized at that point I had a scalability problem. Went back to the drawing board, made that deconfliction server cache a lot of things. And now, you know, I've, I've heard reported to me and I've seen in action. You know, we've had teams of up to like 12 using this all at the same time, so no problem. But, you know, it did go through some trials uh, in February and March, and it was by the end of April, it was pretty, I think, pretty stable. So, but I took this to, like I said, Northeast CCDC, uh, Mid Atlantic CCDC, and a few other events this year. And I even staged like a collaborative capture the flag once. And um, here's what ended up happening kind of organically. It's pretty exciting. You end up with an access team, okay? These are the people who are just, you know, whatever they got, they're getting into stuff. And like, okay, I got in. That's what I like doing. I like getting in. And they run persistence 
and they send that persistence over to the shared server. And you know the victim calls home to that shared server, and you can have people now in the waiting to do post exploitation. Like, oh, new box popped up. I'm going to grab the hashes, and maybe I'm going to start cracking them. Or, hey, new box popped up. I'm going to try to um, see if there's any interesting files on the desktop. You know, you can actually split up your red teaming work by task now, and not by target, which is something we could never do before. And what's really neat, as I kind of showed you in that demo, is you can go back and forth as a team. You can be like, oh, okay, well, I've got my, uh, I've got my access. I got my access team. They can see all the pivots that are set up. Well, now one person sets a pivot. Anybody can use it. So as a team, you can kind of march forward. And this all came about because we had that problem of too much chaos getting in and not enough persistence, getting persistence, but then having too many accesses, and now uh, managing that with the teaming stuff. And this is kind of cool, and you can't see it very well, although Armitage has a distinct UI. I found this Friday night when I couldn't sleep uh, this week um, here. Uh, it was a news story from like a news station in Idaho. And what it was is uh, Idaho National Labs is doing a, um, like a, a SCADA security exercise where their red team was going against a fake company, and they had the news crew inside of the red team room, right? And I'm like, wow, you got that back monitor with what looks like um, uh, a credentials tab in uh, Armitage, and you've got somebody else in the laptop there. He's got his module browser and a couple hosts up. So I, I think it's pretty cool. You know, we've taken this teaming stuff at CCDC, kind of trying to develop this concept, and now it's like crazy we're finding it now. So now to kind of summarize a little bit, because I, I'm, I pride myself on not being long-winded, I hope. Um, I talked to you about collegiate cyber defense competition, uh, a blue-only exercise for college students. A very wonderful thing. I highly encourage you to get involved with it if uh, something's happening in your area. Um, when some digressions, why I'm giving this talk, um, I showed you our process, how we could get a lot of accesses, but it's still chaotic, didn't do anything with them. I showed you how we did persistence and how that gave us accesses, but too many, couldn't manage them. And then I showed you the teaming stuff, how that gave us a way to manage those accesses. And real quick, um, it just wouldn't be fair, I mean, because I've been working with so many people for so many years, I really, really consider myself very fortunate to have worked with these people. And this is a very incomplete list, but these are some of the people I've red teamed with at these events. And if you're here, I see, I do see some of you in this room. You're in there too, Georgia. Um, I really thank you guys. You know, you, I've learned a lot from you, and it really is, I've taken some of your tricks that you've taught me, and they're in this presentation, but, you know, thank you um, for, that, for that privilege. So just wanted to get that out there. Um, and let me just wrap this up with a where to go from here. I'm on Twitter as Armitage Hacker. You can learn more about Armitage at fastandeasyhacking.com. The code for those scripts to automatically own the Linux boxes and to automatically own the Windows boxes, I posted that stuff up too. It's, it's live right now. If you go to fastandeasyhacking.com slash dirty, um, <laughs> you can get that code. Um, again, like I said, for the students, my intention is this is something you take home, play with, and maybe use it to vet new members or to see how quickly you can dig yourselves out. You know, so, I mean, really, I'm trying to get back to you because if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't have a CCDC, and I really love the opportunity I get to work with you guys each year, so it's fantastic. Um, last thing, uh, to learn more about CCDC, go to nationalccdc.org. Um, that's my presentation. Um, I'll take any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, I got one gentleman in front. I'm going to come up to you with the mic. Is that okay? Okay. Um, what has been your newest or most requested feature for Armitage? Okay, the question was, what is my newest or most requested feature for Armitage? Or Armitage? Um, the answer is, everybody keeps asking for reporting. Um, because the tool's gotten more stable now, and it works well for that collaboration stuff. So people keep... Pen testers are using it now, which wasn't originally my intent. My intent was red teams, like uh, these exercises. And so people keep asking for the ability to get their data back out of it. So that's how I want questions. Any other questions? I won't bring the mic to you. I'll just, uh, okay, sir, up front. Orange. Okay, the question was, do I see any corporate techniques, red teams using these techniques? I would say yes. So I showed you that news clip from... I mean, from Friday, this is Idaho National Labs, a Department of Energy red team. That's not corporate, it's government. 
but that's up there. Um, and actually, yeah, as I come to these conferences, I hear about some pretty respectful red teams from some very respectful companies who are indeed using the stuff. And others who also say, yeah, it looks cool, but we haven't looked at it yet because we're really busy. So I hope, I hope it keeps going up, but yeah, I, I am actually seeing that. So good question. Any other questions? Oh, man. Okay, the question was, I'm glad I left time. Uh, the question was, what did I write those Unix and Windows ownage scripts in, and what did I write Armitage in? So this is really weird. Um, I started out IRC guy in the 90s, right? And Khaled Martin Bay, the author of MIRC, was like my hero as a teenager. You know, his little stuffed animal in the about dialogue, if you know MIRC. So, I, you know, flat, or what is it? Imitation sincerest form of flattery. So I wrote an IRC client. I worked on it for years, and I wanted to make it scriptable. So I wrote the scripting language for this IRC client um, to make it, you know, scriptable in a user-friendly way. And that language evolved. I worked on that like for seven years. Um, wrote a book, sold 30 copies. Yay! <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I wrote this programming language, and I really like working with it. So the scripts are written in this language because it makes it really easy to uh, load any Java library, and in like a kind of in a really easy Perl-like way interface with it. So that's how I do the SSH stuff uh, for automating the Unix ownage. And Armitage is actually written in that language too. So if you go look at the Armitage source, you're going to see all this stuff that looks kind of like Perl with Objective-C um, syntax for calling objects. It's kind of wacky. Oh, it's called sleep. So yeah, that's um, I don't talk about it very often, but I love working in it, so it's probably what I'll keep doing. Good question. Got my dirty secret out. Any other questions? You can shout. Oh, sir, up front. Right? Okay, so I'm going to repeat the question real quick. The question was, is there any way we can help these really wonderful and motivated students who keep coming to this event year after year? <laughs> and um, no, they, they do good. I, I have so much respect for the students um, because it really amazes me how much they're able to do in so little time. But let me ask you, are there any mentors for teams in the room? Okay, so if you look around, you'll see a uh, hand up back there. And I know there was another guy I talked to, Jim, earlier. Um, oh, yeah, you're on a team, but what I'm saying, are you guys open to like people in industry like helping you out or coming in and talking to your students? All right, so absolutely. So if, as you see these guys, you can go to nationalccdc.org, look for the regionals, and look for your region, and like contact them. They have a volunteer form, and I think that's a great way to get involved. It's a fantastic thing to do. Paul Sidorian of Paul.com, he does that with Mid-Atlantic. He gives a talk like how to defeat red teams, like blue, dirty blue team tricks, basically. So it's good stuff. And the community would really be better for that, yes. So yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so the, the question was, is there a list of all the ways that the red team has exploited them? These guys are from the Northeast, right? Northeastern even. This is going on video forever. Northeast shout out. So <laughs> anyways, yeah, the question was, is there a list of ways you've exploited us? Um, I can give it to you right now. Default credentials, MS0867. <laughs> default credentials and default credentials. <laughs> I mean, we're not pulling out anything too crazy here. You know, it's just what we can do. So, good question. Anybody else? Go, go ahead. I see in the back. All right, so the question was, is there a way, um, those of you hacker-minded, I know there's plenty of you in the room, uh, can get involved with the red teaming at these different events, at the different CCDC events. And as somebody who's really good at begging, I will say yes. It's hard, because I've had to do a lot of begging even to come back sometimes. 
Um, what you do is you find who's organizing it. So it's like using your network and just say, hey, I want to get involved. Like, uh, and if you know if they know you or they're friends with you, you might be you might be able to get in that way. Or if your company sponsors CCDC, sometimes uh, what they'll do at the regionals is with the sponsorship, they'll give up a team or or a slot or two on the red team, uh, so your folks who go there can get that kind of like immersion. And actually, let me throw this out there. So oftentimes when I try to find people to volunteer to be on the red team, people come back and say, "Oh man, I'm." I do security, but I'm not a pen tester, and I don't know if I can do that. And let me just tell you, go. Go do it. It's a great way to learn. It doesn't matter your level. You've got something to offer. And even if the first year you kind of come in and say, what's going on here? Um, you, it'll force you to up your game, and next time you come back, you're going to be surprised how much better you are. So I really encourage you. If you get the opportunity, it is worth it. For a CCDC? Uh, sure. So the question was, could I quickly go over the major rules of engagement for CCDC? Um, yeah, there's not that many for the red team. So we're not allowed to go into the rooms. So physical access is prohibited. Um, although I saw one region that bent that. Um, I won't say who. Uh, we're not allowed to specifically target one team, OK? So we theoretically don't know what team is what. And we're supposed to try everything against every single team. Although I've heard that some very clever folks at Nationals managed to uh, get the red team all hyped up, and they kept giving themselves a false team number. <laughs> Hacking the hackers. You guys, fantastic. Right mindset. I applaud you greatly for that. So, but yeah, there's really not many rules. I mean, we're just kind of in our room, and you know, for us, we're just, we're, I, I look at it like we're facilitators of an experience. It's not like an adversarial thing. We're not playing a game. We're just trying to facilitate and throw some like kind of mean things just to give you guys something to chew on to uh, get better with. That's all. You can Google search what? Oh, yeah, the rules are Googleable as well. Just um, do a Google search for like a CCDC team packet, and you'll find everything as well. Good call. Thank you. Yes? Sure, one second. So the question was, or the statement, well, it was a question. It was like, they're like, man, we're all pretty elite. GUIs are for lemas. And it's like, so it's like, a lot of command line people don't want to use a GUI, so is there any plan to bring like this teaming functionality and make it available in a uh, command line only way? Let me do this one more time. Something I can do is if I, uh, let me go over to Windows, this will work here. Okay, let me right click on this X. Okay, open in window. I don't know about you guys, but that look like a console to you by any chance? And I got, uh, let's see here, use window, oh wait, use exploit, win tab completion, command history. I don't know, that's kind of command line, right? Yeah, you do have to have Java, but I'm trying to pretend it's not Java. That's, this is my attempt to try to reach out to the command line people. Make it so you can open things up in a full window and just work full screen that way. So you don't have to look at the GUI or the lightning bolts. Um, you had a question in the back, sir? Oh, three more minutes? Fantastic. I'll take uh, one more question, then we'll wrap it up. That's a good question. So the question was, how many concurrent sessions can this handle from a scalability standpoint? I know um, HD's been doing a lot of work um, on like, or the Metasploit team's been making like Metasploit the back end extremely scalable. And I know with um, the commercial products, they, they've been talking into the thousands. And I haven't tested as I don't have the resources to, but I've seen several hundred before without much of a problem. And I've had people like report back that that's worked for them too, so. All right, well with that, I'll be around. So if anybody's got questions or didn't get a sticker, come see me, I'm really nice. Uh, thank you guys, it's been a lot of fun.